Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at Quick Surface. Now, I'm specifically looking at Quick Surface Pro, but Quick Surface Lite will have the same functionality for what we're doing here today. Now, one of the more common questions I get asked when we're talking about scanning is how do we align our scan to a coordinate system? Now, this is the gearbox cover from our RC10 truck series where we scanned this, we created a new design, 3D printed it, and put it on the RC truck. Now, the problem that we have is when we're scanning, and specifically we're talking about RevoScan here, but it's basically a universal problem. When we scan, the first frame that we scan is going to dictate the orientation of our part relative to a global coordinate system. So if you aren't in a perfect orthogonal view, like a front, a side, or a top for that first view that you capture, then you're gonna to have to work on aligning this. And, and even if you're getting that first shot or that first frame, you still need to make sure that you align it to some features relative to how you wanna design your part. Now, this is a tricky one because there aren't really parallel sides. There's not a nice prismatic feature. So I chose this because this is something that we've already done a series on and something that we can see how this works in Quick Surface. So once again, I am currently in the uh, demo version of the Pro, but the light version will have the same functionality for us. So the first thing that we wanna do is what's called extracting primitives. Now extracting a primitive allows us to select areas of our mesh and then generate either a solid or a surface model that can be used later on for aligning to a coordinate system. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Basically, we've got a bunch of different selection filters. The most common is gonna be this magic wand, which is based on curvature. There's an angle or a degree here, and what we do is we simply drag over a certain area, and then we use this slider to dictate where we want that degree to stop. Now, because this part is smooth, it's got rounded corners everywhere, we're gonna to have to use a relatively small number. This is less than a degree. And what this is looking at is the angle between those triangles or those polygons that we have in our scan. Once we have a subset of faces selected, then we can pick which primitive we wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna fit a plane through the selected triangles. I'm not gonna use auto constrain, but I do wanna talk about analysis because this will show you a color map deviation you can see the entire face here is green with the edges being blue. And that means the, the blue edges start to fall away from the plane. And that's really just because it's a fill, it's a rounded corner. So you can see that we're plus or minus 0.1 millimeters for that face. Anything that's in red is 0.5 millimeters. So if we rotate this around, it makes sense because this is not a flat face. It's actually kind of a domed feature. Even though when we designed our part, we kept it flat. It's not truly a flat face. So once we have that selected, I'm gonna turn analysis back off and select create and stay. Now I do need a couple of other primitives to help with this process. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start to drag this around the outside and I can increase the angle, see if I can get more of that face. And then I'm gonna apply a cylinder to it. So try to fit a solid cylinder. And then again, we can take a look at the analysis, see the deviation. This blue section here is fine because that's actually a small recess that we have based on the screw access. But if we rotate around, you can see for the most part that looks pretty good. The red area is got a, a 0.5 millimeter deviation and that's because the real part actually has a cylinder here that's slightly tapered and then it bumps out near the bottom because it's a, a thin molded plastic part. So again, this looks fine. We're gonna select create and stay. And we really need to have at least three references for our coordinate system. And with three references, really all I need now is a line that's gonna represent my x-axis direction. Now this part does have two areas that are relatively straight. We've got a straight section up here and we've got a somewhat straight section down here even though the screw does bump out a bit. There is a small flat section here that we could use as well. So as we're looking at this, we need to pick the area where we want our straight line reference to help us with the X coordinate system. So what we're gonna do is instead of using this magic wand, I'm gonna use the paintbrush or freehand selection. I'm gonna paint a small section over here and a small section over here. And then I want a line between those two. Now I'm gonna select create and close. And what this allows me to do is have my first, second, and third references. But there's one more thing that we have to do before we go to a line. I don't really have a good reference for the bottom because I never finished scanning the bottom. This was a thin part and that's incredibly hard to do. So I simply 
created this mesh by cutting the bottom off. So what we want to do is we want to create or construct an offset plane. So we're going to say plane. We also have plane along path, symmetry plane, and some other options here. But really what we want is a plane that we can construct from another plane. I'm going to pick this plane and just simply pull it down and rotate my model until I feel like it's in the correct location. Remember, this was not a, a tight tolerance part. This was just a cover for the transmission on the RC truck. And what that means is really, I just have to make sure that it, it's large enough to fit over the gears and there's plenty of extra space inside. So as long as this looks to be at about the right position and it looks like it is, then I can go ahead and just confirm it by selecting okay. All right, so now this was essentially a sacrificial plane. I could use it as a reference if I'm going to be building this model in quick surface, but right now it was essentially a sacrificial plane just to create this one because I know that these were parallel. So what I'm gonna do is go to a line by coordinate system and my primary feature is where I want my XYZ origin to be located and that's gonna be this bottom plane. My secondary feature is gonna be the center of the cylinder. That's where I want XYZ zero to be centered at. And my third reference is going to be this line, which is going to be the direction of X. So once I select the line, you can see that it flips X here. Now I can flip this so that Y is pointing up and away, but once I'm done, I can hit apply. Now here is a critical piece of information for you. Apply on all features if you plan to stay in quick surface and continue to work on this. That will ensure that all the primitives you created will rotate with the mesh model. If we turn this off and select apply, you'll notice that some of your primitives, if you've created extra primitives, will not move with the coordinate system shift. And the reason for that is because it doesn't know that everything needs to move. Now, in our case, it worked because this bottom plane is actually referencing this plane. So they have to move together. The cylinder is referencing the mesh and the line is referencing the mesh as well. So now everything should be aligned based on that coordinate system reference. All we need to do at this point is go to our QS menu in the upper left and say export scan data. Note that Quick Surface also can export directly to Autodesk Inventor. And even though we generally use Fusion on this channel, it does have that option. And we will also be talking about Quick Surface for SolidWorks. So there is a plugin or an add-in for that as well. But we're gonna say export scan data. This is gonna be an STL file, so a triangular mesh. And I'm gonna save it as aligned gearbox. I'm gonna overwrite what I have here already. And then I'm gonna go into Fusion and import that so we can see what it looks like. So we're gonna insert a mesh, pick the location, in this case, aligned gearbox, the one we just saved. I'm also gonna turn on my origin so I can see where it's located. And when we view this from the top, what we should see is that the X coordinate system or the X axis looks to be aligned with that bottom edge that we created. The XYZ origin location seems to be centered on this large circle. And then if we rotate this around, you can also see that it's located at the bottom. So we don't have to do any shifting or adjusting in here. Simply say, okay. And now it's placed at the correct location. Now, uh, generally I use control and four to turn off the mesh uh, or at least the edges on the mesh. So that way we can see it a bit better. So that's the process of getting this aligned inside of Quick Surface. Again, Quick Surface itself is a full suite of mesh manipulation tools. So we can process and prepare the scan data. We can extract primitives and we can build our 3D model. That's something that we will be talking about on this channel and in other courses. But for right now, I wanted to answer the question on how you use Quick Surface to align your scan data to a coordinate system. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.